Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage, where I'm currently repairing this 2011 Ford Edge, which lost in a collision battle with my 1985 Toyota. Last week, I showed how to repair a used metal body panel for repaint. Today, I'm going to show the steps for repairing a used plastic bumper for fresh paint. Here's what I'm working with. It's silver, and I'm going to paint it blue. It's also full of nicks and scratches that I'm going to fill first. The lower half of the bumper is a separate piece that's bare plastic. So first, I'll separate the two. That way, there's not anything that I'll have to mask off. Next, I'm washing it with soapy water to remove all dirt so I don't sand it into the surface. Now the surface is clean and I have some 500 grit paper for wet sanding. And I'm using a block here for the flat areas just like I did on the hatch door. I'm sanding in a crosshatch pattern, just like I did in the last video. This is more effective than just sanding in one direction. Wipe this down with some clean water and repeat. I'm sanding to rough up the smooth surface so the new primer and paint will have something to bite to. It won't adhere to a smooth, shiny surface. I'll wipe this down, let it dry, and see how it's coming along. While that side is drying, I'm sanding these hidden areas. I'm just using my fingers here because they're tight areas with a lot of curves and angles. Alright, this top side is dry now, and as you can see, I have a ways to go yet. All these shiny areas need to be scuffed before applying anything to the surface. I even need to sand more in these tight and hidden areas too. Here's a look at all the nicks and chips in the bumper. Some of these are kind of deep. The corner edges are pretty bad too. I seen it through the paint here and there are some nicks as well. Just about sanded through here. More nicks. So I went to town sanding the entire bumper. It's kind of a guessing game because you can't tell what parts are still glossy when everything's all wet. That's one advantage of dry sanding versus wet sanding. I'll go over all the pros and cons in a second. After plenty of sanding, I took the bumper out and washed it off. Be sure to wash the back side as well because they're always dirty. All dirt needs to be removed before getting into primer and paint. The pressure from a paint gun can knock debris loose and it can end up in the color or clear coat. Let's take a minute to compare the dry sanding I did in last week's video to the wet sanding I'm doing today. Dry sanding makes dust, but it doesn't leave water all over the floor. Another reason I dry sanded the hatch is because I don't want water to get in all these holes and end up inside seams or spot welds where it could start rusting. Plastic bumpers don't rust, so it makes sense to wet sand here. One downfall with wet sanding is you have to stop and wash it off sometimes to remove all the material from sanding. And anytime you want to check your progress, you have to wait for the surface to dry to see any glossy parts. As you saw in last week's dry sanding video, I could see any glossy parts as I was working and take care of them without washing or drying first. Both dry and wet sanding is also abrasive to your fingers, but wet sanding especially because your skin is softer when it's wet. I've wet sanded entire vehicles before and had to take a break because my fingertips were starting to bleed. The biggest difference is that dry sanding clogs the paper a lot faster. So I went through at least twice as much paper sanding this hatch than I have on the bumper. I've got this secured with a bungee because the last thing you want is for it to fall on the concrete floor and make more blemishes to sand. I did knock down some of the high points on these nicks when I wet sanded. There's a little bit of gloss here on this edge. I can see it in the right light. Rather than go through wet sanding, washing, and drying again, I'm just going to lightly scuff it with a dry piece of the 500 grit. That's better. Now I'm going to check all the edges and hit them with the dry paper real quick. Hey, it's day two. The weather is perfect and today I'm going to start filling in these nicks and scratches. The garage is open because a well ventilated work area is important when spraying. The bumper looks clean, but it's actually not ready because there's still sanding dust everywhere. So I need to clean it to get the primer to stick well. 
I'm using some Dupicolor Prep Spray, and it's a wax and grease remover. It's like the Frank's Red Hot of my garage. I put that shit on everything, except my skin. I wouldn't spray it on anything alive. I advise that you test it on a small area first. This stuff can be aggressive on some spray paints. You'll see an example of why this is important in a little bit. Now the bumper is ready for primer, but there's one additional step because this is plastic. In the areas where the bare plastic bumper is exposed, primer may not bond well. And I have quite a few of those areas. The solution is adhesion promoter. This needs to go on first. Ideal for automotive plastics. It doesn't take much, just a quick coat. That's all I need right there. I'm almost out. Better not waste any. So just spray any bare plastic and it's good. The adhesion promoter dried really fast. Now it's time for some filler primer. It fills deep scratches and minor imperfections. Nicks like this, all these tiny ones here, where I'm guessing it was dropped on pavement at some point. More coats would be needed for the deeper imperfections. Always test a can first to make sure it doesn't spray globs of paint. I had to redo the Camry fender once because of that. Just a real light coat is perfect. It may not even cover the whole area, but I'm just getting the first coat to bond to the surface without running. There will be many coats to build up the damaged areas. Progress check. I'm leaving the can in the warm sun. They spray better warm than cold. Here's how it looks after the first coat. Still looks like crap, right? Remember this picture and we'll compare later on after the filler primer does its magic. I applied multiple coats, allowing time to dry between each coat. Each coat builds up the surface of the damaged area. Let's take a close look and see how it's coming along. This stick is still visible. This corner is starting to look decent. That big one is gonna take a lot more coats. I've got some 320 grit and I'm using a scuff pad as a block. The 320 is a little rougher than the 500, so it sands faster. I'm sanding to knock the repair areas down some. As each coat of filler primer goes down, it builds up the entire surface. Sanding the surface removes the excess filler primer, but leaves it in the low areas like nicks and scratches. I'm dry sanding this. I have plenty of paper to use, and I don't want to deal with washing and drying at this point. I'll use up paper to save some time. The filler primer sands easily. It's easy to knock down these repair areas. I'm super careful to go light on raised edges and corners. It's easy to sand through those spots. And if I do sand through back to the plastic bumper, then just clean and apply some more adhesion promoter before adding more coats of primer. Like right here, I'm through the filler primer and that's the original paint showing through on the edge. But this nick is about filled in. So next I sanded all the repair areas down to see if they were flush or if I would need to add some more coats of filler primer. Here's a run. It's easy to have these when laying down a heavy coat of primer on a vertical surface. Don't sweat it. Runs and primer are okay. Just get a sanding block and sand it down flush. Easy fix. I can't even tell it was ever there. After all that sanding, I washed the bumper to help remove the dust. Getting this thing wet really brings out the contrast between the OEM silver paint and the gray filler primer. You can see how much of the bumper got coated with primer in the repair process. I'm gonna let this dry and get it back in the garage for another cleaning. Once again, even though I hose it down, there's still a layer of sanding dust on here that I need to remove. I ran out of prep spray, but I wiped it down with some uh, Sherwin surface cleaner. Okay, that did not go well. Look at all the primer that came off when I was wiping it down. The surface is all smeared and uneven now. The cleaner said it was safe for lacquer paints, but I guess not lacquer primer, uh, which is what this filler primer is. So I need to build this area back up with some filler primer to get it even again. I'll leave this goof in as a reminder to always test in a small area because some products react differently to others. So 
No more SC159 for this bumper. PPG DX330 has always treated me well. You can't go wrong with this stuff. The bumper is all clean now, and you can see I did sand down to the bare plastic in a few areas. It's easy to do. I used the last of my adhesion promoter, so I got another can. Here's what they look like now. Next, I added more coats of filler primer to the repair areas. And again, and again. I put it on real thick, so I let it cure overnight. The next morning, I went back to sanding everything down level again. The surface may look smooth to the naked eye and even feel smooth, but a guide coat will bring out any minor imperfections. All I need for a guide coat is a different color of primer. So I'll spray this on. And then, when I sand it off, the low areas will still be red. Guide coats are great to use on bodywork when you need to get something perfectly smooth. I'll let this dry and sand it down and see what shows up. When sanding the guide coat, you need to use a block for it to be effective. It won't be even if you press the paper with your fingers. Look how much it's clogging the paper. This primer's not very sandable at all. Look though, there's a couple of low spots, very minor, but I wouldn't have seen them otherwise. But yeah, it's going to take a while to sand this back down. I don't recommend the sandable primer. Try a different color of filler primer instead. So that took forever. I had to go back down to 100 grit and work my way back up. So I'm never using a sandable primer again. But it did the job. Here's a couple more tiny imperfections that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. Now I have a surface of sandable primer, filler primer, and the OEM paint. I have primer sealer to give one consistent finish, which is ideal before laying down the color coat. But before I apply the primer sealer, I'm going to wipe the surface with a tack cloth to be sure any debris is removed. Plastic parts build static electricity easily, and that attracts dirt, which can show up as bumps in the finish if not removed. A tack cloth is just a sticky rag that dirt clings to. I'm not pressing hard, just lightly going over the surface. Then I spray two coats of the primer sealer. It's dry now, and this looks perfect. If the primer sealer has any rough spots or orange peel, I could sand them down, but this looks absolutely perfect. Now, I had some errors in this video, which I'll leave in because we all make mistakes sometimes and maybe you can learn from mine and how I corrected them. But I'm very happy with the end result. This bumper is ready for paint. I may hit the hatch with a couple coats of this uh, primer sealer as well. It's good stuff. So next, I need to get these painted and cleared, but that might not happen for a couple of weeks because first, I need to clear out the garage. That means getting the Toyota and the Mustang started up and outside for the first time this year. Do me a favor and hit like if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the Sixth Gear Garage.